Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We are actually going to be covering a Yuki player currently running, I do believe, two-handed sword uh, today. And we have Amir with us. How are you doing, Amir? I'm doing pretty good. Um, saw the Yuki skin come out, I believe, last season. Uh, getting the demo one this season, which is a pretty big fan favorite from a lot of players, but... Uh, we actually see this Yuki player playing a skin that not many players have, Cadet Yuki, which was released early access, uh, season three, I believe, or I season was, four. I was gonna say I don't even, I didn't even realize this was a skin. I, I, I thought it yeah. was just a basic Yuki, but apparently I was wrong, and he's got the fancy, fancy skin. Okay. Yeah, there are very few players with this, and. I, I want to say we have maybe 10 players that still play the game on NA that have this skin. It's a, it's a very rare commodity. Well, you know what? That just shows that this is the Yuki that you want to watch if you want to learn how to play Yuki. And for those that don't know how Yuki works, we'll go over the abilities real quick here. So first is his passive perfect fit. How this works is that Yuki stores cufflinks as a resource. You can actually see that right below his health bar. He's got four of them. He consumes uh, his cufflinks when damaging an enemy. And when he deals damage while he has a cufflink, it deals additional true damage. And Yuki will recover all of his cufflinks while he's out of combat or by activating button up, which we'll cover here in a second. Next is his Q from head to toe. So Yuki's next basic attack will deal increased damage, slowing for 50%. If he has a cufflink up, though, it'll actually stun the enemy for 0.5 seconds. And I think that might also scale upwards. I'm not 100% sure there. Next is a button up. Button up, uh, basically, it allows the cooldown is reduced by one second each time Yuki deals damage. So every time Yuki's dealing damage, his W is up faster. And how it works is he channels for one second and reduces the cooldown of his dashlane gentleman, which we'll get over in a second. That's his E. While using button up, damage taken is reduced by 30%. And when it's complete, he gets his cufflinks. So I know that's a lot of confusing talk right there. But basically, he presses this. He gets a defense for a little bit. Regains his cufflinks while he channels it. And reduces some of his cooldowns. Uh, his E is dashing gentleman. So this is, makes it so he dashes in a targeted direction. And if he hits an enemy, it deals skill damage. And, in, and disarms them, making it so that they can't auto attack for one second. And hitting an enemy also reduces the cooldown of dashing gentlemen by five seconds. So less effective when running away, more effective when being aggressive and engaging on enemies. Lastly, coup de grace, or known as cut most famously by a lot of the community. Yuki slashes an area in front of him. We haven't seen him use it just yet here. But when he deals the initial damage, it causes skill damage to enemies, leaving a mark and slowing them for 90, 90%. And then the mark explodes, dealing true damage equal to 15% of the enemy's max HP. And, <clears throat> sorry, with, um, with a lot of Yuki skills, they're not, like, they're not very flashy, not like a, like a Tazia or even, like, a Sylvia. But you can be very effective when used properly, um, using the E to get the cooldown reduction on it. Um, with that being a flat 5 second reduction, it means that every piece of CDR that Yuki gets towards that E is actually even more valuable because if you're able to take your E from the base is 12 seconds when you get it fully leveled up down to, I believe now it's like eight seconds right now. Um, he is, when he connects it, it's reducing five seconds, making it a four second cooldown. Whereas if, uh, if his E was percent based, you wouldn't really care too much about how much CDR you're stacking because it would be reducing by not too much extra every time you connect it. And I think on top of that, uh, yeah, his ult does scale up. Um, every level gives you an extra 5% of health true damage at the end of it, going from 15 to 25. And those are two of his biggest things um, where he sometimes has to use cut on because he is no other real aoe and he actually uses it on the wolves as well yeah he because, doesn't have the aoe to yeah. take these down otherwise and i think one thing also to really talk about here amir that i really want to bring up about yuki is so two-handed sword yuki is really known as being a tank pick 
even though <laughs> the abilities we just talked about, aside from his W giving him some damage reduction for the one second that you channel, he doesn't really have a whole lot of tankiness that you would expect from a lot of common tank picks. The main reason that a lot of two-handed sword Yukis can get away with this is the fact that one, the passive lets him do true damage, and two, his alt lets him do true damage, or um, yeah, equal to max HP, meaning that he's able to just kind of innately do damage regardless of his build, and keep him, allow him to build these tanky items and play around that more disruption kind of play style. Yeah, it's very nice to see as we will actually be jumping into a fight. Yeah, we're seeing the Q instantly into an E onto a Lyanne, make sure that she can't actually do anything. Has no ability to auto attack, no ability to kind of generate some of these uh, stacks that she needs to transform. And we're going to be chasing the Bianca, just connecting the E, making sure that we get the cooldown reduction, press W again, get the cooldown reduction on E again, instantly have it back up. Going for stuns once she gets into that coffin, and then take her down. Yeah, it's so smooth and in such a fast playstyle. And I mean, they played that fight almost perfectly. You notice they like they took almost no damage, but were able to put so much pressure and completely shut down that team. The button management or the cufflings management is really, really important to make sure that you're really capitalizing on getting your effective like stuns, your true damage, uh, you know, getting these bonus uh impacts on the team and making sure you're always having them up at the right times. Yeah, but we are going to see a Martina diving forward, and we're just going to look for the stun. We don't actually don't look for the E, but we do look for the ult on the 11. Very nice target, as percent max health on a tank is a lot of damage. Walking away, trying to make sure that we get the cufflinks back. We don't have W up, we don't have E up. I think once our E is up, we're going to look for an engage if anyone does ever walk into range of us. But it doesn't look like we have the opportunity yet. I think maybe we just back off from this fight, as... Two range versus Yuki in a range doesn't feel too good. I mean, he's looking for the angle. Yeah, I think right now the scariest part is that he's just not finding a good opportunity to get in that engage. I think if you, if they overstep, Yuki can absolutely win this. It's just finding it. But I think they just they got their teammate coming back soon. We'll have to see. Does the Nikki join them? Nikki does join them. And now I think he's going to go back to a fresh fight. We do have the Quake. And we might actually just see. Yeah, they're just trying to kill the tank again. Yuki, Yuki probably fine with that. And... The enemy team does get the mithril, but they do get another kill. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most amazing trade. Sadly, we aren't able to actually pick up the the objective, but picking up an extra kill, get some bonus RP. It's uh, still somewhat of a positive. Yeah, you know, we take we take we take the small gains that we can. Uh, interesting. Also, we talk about running Quake, and we leveled up Quake immediately. Kind of same thing. I think it's the choices between. What it would be like quake and probably like force field quake is the most common for the fact that it applies a slow does good damage it lets you just be annoying while you're in the fight and then force field if you you're the solo front line and you feel like you need that extra survivability because again yuki only has his button up and his parry to keep himself alive outside of his his items keeping him slightly more tanky yeah and yuki is also i think since uh the inclusion of these stack skills. Oh, actually, we're gonna. Sorry, I for second thought that that was gonna be someone else TPing into our team, but it's just gonna be Nikki TPing over. Um, yeah, since the addition of tax skills, I think Yuki has been known as this uh, kind of Quake bot, where if you see a Yuki on your team, he's usually expected to take Quake um, because it just allows him to start sticking on a lot of these targets easier. He gets that E onto someone, Q, and then presses Quake right after. It helps him connect that ult, um, because a lot of his damage actually does come from connecting this ult, getting 25% max health damage on someone. Just removing 25% of their health is way too effective to be missing this button. So if you're pressing Quake, get the slow, then connect the ult right after. Pretty hard to miss. Um, but I think on top of that, it's just, yeah, Yuki doesn't really have too many tools to, uh, kind of guarantee, guarantee this ult. So it's always nice to see instant quake, um, instant ult or something of that to, to guarantee it connects. No, for sure. Yeah. I mean, that's, I think that's the, the most important thing, right? Is I mean, that 50% slow coming in from quake, just trying to make him guarantee his main hits. And we actually see here. He got the meteor and he actually slams it into his Aurora longsword. 
uh you know an extra another slow that he gets when he hits a basic attack but he actually bought for his zahir he got a zahir an item instead of his own i mean yuki not needing those items again we're really playing around all of our true damage more than anything so getting our other teammates items is pretty good yeah it's uh it's nice to see because all we need to do is be able to weave in and out of the fights make sure we have cufflinks up and what our team needs to do is dump as much damage as we can while we're doing this exactly because yuki isn't necessarily a tank he's just a a big disruption in a lot of these fights make sure that your opponents are hitting you for a bit and then you dip out and then run back in force them to hit you again dip out again going back and forth playing this tug of war game exactly and now one thing also I just really want to emphasize here too i know i mentioned that you know he bought for him because yuki doesn't need as many items for playing for the true damage it is very important to also have the knowledge and understanding of tankiness power spiking so as the game goes on the longer the more you you need certain items to keep yourself alive yuki got a really early myth chess so he's already pretty equivalent on to the power levels that's going to be needed to be tanky in a lot of these fights as the game goes on we'll definitely need more items but at this current time of day three i mean yuki's going to be more than tanky to handle almost any fight that we see here yeah, as we do see a fight come out where, to be honest, it didn't even seem like he was too needed until the end, where his Zaheer kind of just pumped a lot of damage. He's able to come in right after, throw the ult down, and then completely nuke out the, uh, I think it was Camillo that was left. I do believe so. But yeah, like, that fight is just, we see someone go in, we counter-engage when they try and go forward, and we're just doing the cool Yuki thing where, especially when it's an auto attacker that's diving our teammate, disarm them, make sure they can't auto attack, stun them, and we press W, disarm them again, and then uh, just keep removing our opponent's opportunity to take a fight. Oh, it's definitely an interesting play style, though. It's it, it plays so much different than a lot of other kind of characters, especially because you're 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 really playing that that support role. You're playing that counter engage or that engage for your team and you're really really just playing around that cc and disruption it's it's really fun yeah, to kind of watch um it's also nice to see we're gonna be slamming our heel cut onto our boots rather than i think a few yuki builds just ignore heel cut altogether or opting into putting it on like a centipede on arm piece but I think we've noticed that our team comp maybe has a bit too much defense and not enough offense. So we're going to be slamming our blade boots and maybe an offensive arm piece or off offensive headpiece as well. Um, yeah, as... I, and I think, uh, I don't know necessarily if it's offense, but he's the only heel cut on the team. So I think that's the main oh, reason. Yeah. yeah, I mean, we're not going to rely on Centipede's Pauldron. Really important to realize if you're looking at your team and you see the only heel cut is, is like a reflect heel, that is that is not actual heal cut that is heal cut once in a blue moon you really need someone to be applying heal cut when you deal damage not when just the one person's getting hit by auto attacks yeah conditional heal cut is not as nice as uh hey i touched you now you're getting heal cut but we will be seeing a burning heart okay come out the slot. no actually uh, amir i want to know if you know this or not does the burning hearts heal cut apply the heal reduction Ooh. from blade boots that that is a question i didn't think i'd have to answer within the yeah. next year yeah um. right it's an interesting thought i think it does and if it does i mean that is guaranteed passive aoe heal cut for his team at all times i think I think, yeah, because it does deal skill damage, it should still apply the heal cut, which is actually a very cool interaction. I never thought about stuff like that before. Yeah, I mean, he's that... he's got his Quake, but then once Quake runs out, he's got this going. Yeah, this two-item combo might be a bit stronger than uh, I previously thought, because if you're able to just apply heal cut for being around people, then it, it just makes heal cut a bit more effective. Especially on a team where he's literally the only heal cut, he is going to be able to guarantee that whoever they're on, as long as they are around the Yuki, they're they're getting heal cutted. <laughs> yeah, but it looks like 
we had a Sidewinder Echion run over to us. I think they realized that they don't want to take that fight and backed off as our team is actually a bit ahead of uh, of most teams right now. But yeah, we're going to be going to contest Wick, get a blood, probably hand it over to our Zaheer so that he can slam more damage out and yeah, throwing that ult down onto Wick. I was actually very scared seeing the ult, wondering if Wick was going to dash behind him as Wick does just decide to dash because she has that ability. I whiff way too many abilities when Wickline dashes past me, man. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I'm going to send all my abilities and then Wickline's, by the way, I'm behind you now. And I'm like, why, Wickline? Why? Yeah, that's when you throw out the full combo. Um, thought about every button you're going to put out behind before the hand. Start throwing that Tazia combo out or something. And then, uh, sadly, Wick is like, nah, I dodge. Focus. Yeah, so, okay. <laughs> A couple things to talk about. One... Blood weapon on the Nikki, not the Zaheer, which is really weird because you would have expected, I believe, what, Chaser on Zaheer here? Really, really, uh, really strong. Well, I think it's specifically because we're actually on uh, Shuriken Zaheer, which oh. I don't yeah, know you're right. how often sees play, but um, with Shuriken, I think that they get access to, um, to Hex on Blood Weapon, and other weapon i think gives them frenzy and they want lich grass which is what they have right now yeah which makes sense there so, yeah yeah and it, the other oh sorry there <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was gonna say uh if you want uh if you want to have access to lich's grasp you have to have uh either uh your arm slot be scotty or just keep your weapon the same which makes sense. And oh my gosh, we're going to try and stop the TPs here. I think we're actually going to succeed too. Nikki goes in with the uppercut into the yep, armed discut. And that's going to be it. Martina actually doing a really good job attempting dodge. Good parry block on the broadcast. And she goes down. Yeah, very unfortunate for the Martina. Her team was able to TP out, but she was just the last one. Slightly unable. Probably had like 0.5 seconds left. <laughs> yeah, the it's, Nikki uh... caught it really well. Yeah, just seeing that Nikki ult, I could I could feel their their disappointment on maybe just clicked a bit too late or maybe clicked the wrong zone. It was looking around too long. Exactly, and also the other thing too, uh, I want to talk about with the Yuki build. I really do think the blade boots were a final kind of aspect that we just sort of picked up because of the team comp. Because yeah, everything else is tanky. The only thing that's not tanky is the weapon, which you don't have a tanky option for weapons, so either weapon is perfectly fine. And I think this one works the best because it just gives them an extra slow to be able to apply at any time. Yeah, and it's also nice that we're going over by tax skill for our... I think Zaheer was the one that took it. Meaning that should be on blink 3 now, giving him the extra mobility in any fight. Zaheer being an immobile mage and us not really having a tank that's just going to go sit down and peel for him. Give him, giving him this extra mobility is very nice. We're just going to go forward, try and make sure that our opponents don't even notice we have a Zaheer, and then keep dealing what we can do. No, for sure. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to see how Yuki plays this last fight, because he's got a couple different options that he can do. One is he's going to be able to full dive with the Nikki onto the Z enemy Zaheer and take up the Zaheer. His secondary option is going to be disrupt CC and um, potentially even cut the Isaac and Echion, which I think is probably the better play, creating that space and that room for Arzi here to play, because I think we have better disruption and better counter engage than what the enemy team has for engage to get onto ours here. Yeah, my usual thoughts would be that we see the Isaac and Echion try and double dash forward and we just press alt right on top of our Zaheer, force them to stay away from him. He gets to throw out some free abilities. But, you know, maybe maybe there's the chance that this Hedgen instantly runs over to the other zone, 1v3s them, and uh, <laughs> and gets the Martina and 11 back up. But sadly, it does not look like that's the case, as Hedgen's going to be caught out by our team. I don't think she even realized. And... What? Did she not clue in that they they got the vision on her? They, they reconned her, and she just kind of stood there. Um, you know, maybe had to type to her team, um, you know, going through some discussions on how they want to play the last fight. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, 
it it's it just happens sometimes, you know. Maybe a bit too unaware. Mom called him. Um, <laughs> I just think of uh, the old <laughs> Xbox days of like you're playing in the middle of the game and you're like, "Mom, mom, no, I'm I'm in a game right now, mom." <laughs> 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 no, I can't pause uh, the game. <laughs> yeah, I mean it. Surprisingly for me, still happens every once in a while, <laughs> which is unfortunate. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's nice to see. Or at least to hear about uh, some of those days. I kind of forget about them all the time where it's like, you know, you're just playing uh, playing some online games with some friends. Here comes some cheese. Then, Get ready for this. This is going to yeah. be spicy. Oh, there's the cheese. They go on to the Nikki with the parry. Unlucky for the Zaheer. He actually threw the NATO, but the parry just came through in time to make sure that he gets out. And it looks like we're just going to keep playing forward, trying to make sure that this team doesn't actually even get to our Zaheer. There's Zaheer on the floor instantly, though. Wait, that is, is actually, surprising. that is so funny right there. So I thought that, you know, if anyone was going to be diving, it's going to be the y Nikki and the Yuki. Yuki was the only one that didn't dive the Zaheer. He actually just kept Ekion out of the fight and just made it so he couldn't help follow up the dive that Zaheer and Nikki did. That was a that was a surprising fight with uh, so much damage coming out. Nikki ulting onto the enemies here and then nuking him down. And that's a prime display there of how to play a tank Yuki. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and we'll catch you in the next one.